In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, I'd like to show you the basics of working with the speech to text tool in the new interface. Some things have changed and even improved. What basically it will do is it will look in an audio track and try to extract all the words and print them as text as an overlay in the subtitle track. It's a bit like what you do when you turn on that feature if you're watching a YouTube video, but this is actually part of your project. I'm going to take this video clip I have. It's an old tutorial I did on the AutoSum feature inside Microsoft Excel. And in some ways, this is an ideal option to use because it's one voice speaking hopefully clearly into a microphone. Now, the more voices you have, the more clutter, the more interference, the harder it is for the program to work. So this should be a best case, but even then we'll have to do some editing. So how do I do the speech to text? Once I have it loaded, I click on the subtitle room and I have three options. We can import from a file. We're not going to do that. We can start this manually. And with this new AI feature, I encourage you not to do manual. It's, it takes so much more time. We will have to do some manual editing and that's enough. Let's take the AI speech to text. When you click on that, it will have to load the code for the first time. It may take up to two minutes. Once it's loaded, you'll see this screen. First of all, it needs to know which audio track you want to use. In this case, I only have one, so it doesn't matter which one I use. It can use multiple tracks, which is the default. So if you have audio from multiple tracks and you want to capture all of that, it will do that. You transcribe range is an option. Now that's grayed out. Why? Because I don't have a range selected. If before I click on this button, I select a range, this will be enabled and it will give me not the audio length, but the length of the range. And even if the range is selected, let's do that just to show you what we can do here. Let's select a small range here and click on the button. Now it says I have 12 seconds. I can transcribe only that range or I can turn it off and I'll transcribe the entire piece. So let's do the entire thing. Now I've discovered that I can't figure out how to turn this other checkbox into something that's active. So I can turn off punctuation if I want. Maybe someday I'll figure that one out, but let's click on create. So what it does, it analyzes the video tracker tracks that I've selected and it will look for all the language and turn it into words that are chopped up and appear on the subtitle track in the project. As you know, this for five minutes, it's almost done. It doesn't take much time at all. When it's done, we'll look at some of the features you can use to modify the results and make it even better than we started out. Okay, so here we have our results. I'm gonna move my playhead. We have a whole list. We have a start time and stop time for every subtitle. And we can scroll through the whole list. We can also move by using the playhead, moving left or right through the project. Now, one thing I notice that I do not like, if I click here, is if I look at this, I'm going to see that I don't like this text and I want to change it. So I click on the T tool at the top and this allows me to change it. The default is white with a black border. I'm turn the border off. I'm not, I don't like the white. I'll turn it here and I'll turn it into say a dark blue and I'll make it bold and I can change the font size or the font face. I can align it center left or right as well. I can actually work with 3d. I'm going to change that. Now I like that a lot better. Now if I click over here to this place, Oh, it didn't change it. What's going on? Well, I didn't click on apply to all. If I want the same thing changed universally, all I need to do is highlight that particular subtitle, go back to my feature and click on apply to all. Before I do that, I want to show you there's another thing you can change that applies to all. That's the location. That's the four headed arrow. I click on that. Now it doesn't give me something I can move. It gives me a box with X and Y. X being horizontal, Y being vertical, and I can 
raise all of them up or down. And when I'm done with this, I can edit any one of them individually if I so choose. So I'm going to kind of move this down even a little bit more, I think. And click on apply to all. So now that's changed the position of the text on every single subtitle. Let's see if it changed the font. No, it did not. So what I need to do is go to the font control and click on apply to all for that one as well. So though they work universally, they're not linked together. So you can change the, the both the location and the appearance of the subtitles for every single subtitle in your subtitle track. That's what I've just done. So let's look at this. Uh, there are some things that I like about it and some things that I will change. For example, here, let's go back a little bit and we'll hear the audio, see where we're going. If we look at the formula bar, I made my total simply by doing the plus key and adding the cell, the content of B4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Now you notice it's separated and 9. And then what it did is when I went to B4, 5, 6, 7, I don't like the text. Now to edit the text, all you need to do is click on it. And I'm going to go in this area here and just retype B slash 4 slash 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 delete. Okay. And now I've changed that, but now I want it longer. So there's a couple ways I can lengthen it. I can go over here to the time code and click in the time code and I can edit the ending time code if I want. So I could make that maybe 33, make it a second longer, press enter. And you notice it changed it. The other way I like to do it since I'm used to editing on the timeline, it's just drag and stretch out or make it smaller. Now, I also have and nine here on the next line, and I don't want that. If I want to remove a title, I click on the minus button after I highlight it, and now it takes it out. And now I have actually more room here to add this one. Now, if I want to split it, so let's say I want this into two separate titles. How do I do that? Well, if I want to split it, I can click on the title again in the text, move my cursor to where I want it to go in the text, and then I can click on the icon here, split subtitle, or I can use control enter. Okay, and now I have not one subtitle, but two, which is nice. So what happens if I want to put them back together. Can I do that? Of course I can. I'll take the, let's see, let's take two we might want to add together. Let's take this uh, and we'll put in 20. I want it to go with the one above it. I'm going to click on the one that says merge subtitles. And now it merged it. Again, you can change the, the, the length any way you want. So that's a nice way to split. Nice way to merge. If you want to add a subtitle, you move to where you want to go and you click the plus key and you can add one. Now, there's another option that we have besides merging and splitting and adding and subtracting. I have a search. I'm going to search for the word auto, A-U-T-O. Now, I'm using a feature called Auto Sum in Excel and it doesn't understand that word. So I want to change how it looks. I have Auto Sum here. And I want to make it one word. And I can actually capitalize auto and capitalize sum. If I click on this one, I have another one. Now, it, it thought I meant auto sum, S-O-M. And so it did it its best, but it didn't understand my intentions. So I can check every time that occurs and see how I want to change it. Here, here we have auto sum with an E. You yeah, have auto sum with an E. I could even do a search and replace. Watch, I'm going to I'm going to do a search for auto S O M E. Okay, and this is search and replace here. I'll click that and turn that on. I'll replace it with a capital A U T O S O S U M. I'll click replace. Okay. 
and I can also do replace all. Now it replaced that. Now there are a couple other ways in which it appeared that weren't the same, so I want, might want to go back and do another check on just auto. Uh, didn't, didn't light up. I'm going to turn the replace off. Maybe that's what I need to do. Oh, it's A-U-O-T. Okay, A-U-T-O, enter. Okay, and it found some others I could replace. And here it's two different words. So there's a variation there. That's a really great start, if you, especially if you have tons of verbiage in your audio track, to give you a great start to turn it, or part of that track, from speech to text using the new feature. And if at any time you want to change things, you have the option of going back here, and you can clear all subtitles. You can export them as an SRT file and do some other features. But these are the basics, the nuts and bolts of speech-to-text in the new interface in CyberLink PowerDirector.